everyone. We're here at the Make Music booth at TMEA uh, with Chris Meredith, the director, band director at from Louisville High School. So, um, kind of, what's your philosophy of teaching? What's what drives the core of your your teaching? Philosophy of teaching. Well, um, the big driving force that how I got into music and what we what we try to do is we're trying to give the kids the best experience we possibly can all the time. I think uh, really fortunate to have educators in my life that I think that was their purpose. They tried to give us the best experience we could have. They tried to give us something better than what they had. Mm -hmm. And I've been so fortunate to have so many awesome music educators in my life that did that for me. I think my mission right now is to, to give our kids the, the best experience we can give them and what better than what even I had. And I had a great experience. Who are some of the teachers that had a lasting impact on you? Uh, it's just countless. I, I, you know, it's hard. I just had lunch with one. So um, who was not a teacher who at last? That sounds like it'd be easier to answer. No. Yeah, well, I, I, well, a standard thing that you see, I think, in a lot of the educators that I had been inspired by mm -hmm. are ones that have continued to try to, to find self-growth, you know, and they, they always stro strove to be the best version of themselves, and, 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 and they modeled so well for us. Lifelong learners, we hear that all the time. And so, like, it's been such a huge influence. That, Literally, educators, music educators, and, and even non-music educators in my life. I, I just been, I'm, I stand on the shoulders of so many great teachers. So I, I, I it would not do justice by naming an individual yeah. for sure. Awesome, that's a great, I guess, place to be. Then yeah, very fortunate for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, what's your favorite part about teaching? Like, what what gets you up in the morning? Uh, just the, the connections to whether it's like music or the kids or. or or the process, you know, like every day is, uh, I, I, you discover so much, whether it's in the music or in the community that we're in or the path that we're going down and all of that, the goal setting we have. And it's, uh, it never, it, it's never the same. It's always changing, you know? So like, that's, that's really what I enjoy so much. And, and working as a team, whether it's working as a team with, the, you know, the associate band directors I'm with, or, or vertically, or with people in my school, or with the student leaders, sure. you know? Yeah. That's, the connections are, are so fun. Awesome. Um, do you have, if a, a young person was looking to get into the teaching, they want to major in music, what advice might you have for them? Uh, well, I, so if they're, if they're not in teaching yet, mm -hmm. you know, if they're maybe getting a degree or thinking about it, is number one, just teach. You know, I, I think, I think a, a lot of, young um, music ed majors now, if they come out and observe or whatever, hey, what's the secret to getting, getting to be really good, is uh, go out and be a drill tech. Um, go go teach private lessons. If there's no private lesson like structure or if kids can't afford it, teach for free. Yeah. You're not going to get better if you don't do it. You know, um, start start a trombone choir at, at a high school for free mm -hmm. or, or a clarinet choir or do a voice thing or whatever. Um, and I'm, I'm, I was really fortunate to have, have actually grown up in Louisville, really close to the University of North Texas. I was able to come back to my alma mater mm -hmm. um, as a student at North Texas, and we started a trombone choir. And we did a lot of things. I did things for free, but I got the opportunity to work and, and kind of hone my craft a little bit. That's huge. And then number two, especially when you're in the profession, mentorship. You know, I, you know, I, I think uh, something you, you had actually asked me, if preparing for like to do a little casual talks, like what's a, like a major mistake maybe, you know? And I think don't, don't wait to get mentored. Don't wait until you think you're ready to like, to ask for help, right? Uh, find mentors out there that you aspire to be like, um, a North Star of sorts that you would aspire to, to want to be. And, and um, I'm, again, they become, fantastic educators in your life and and it's your your students win now and your future students win because you're just going to grow to be a better teacher yeah. and person awesome. uh, so so yeah cool. let's shift focus a little bit so you co-wrote a couple of blogs for for us for make music um and a lot of it centered around music technology using technology in the classroom in different ways for solo and ensemble and things like sure. that so what what ways what types of technology do you bring into your classroom or, or into your students education well uh first off i think we're able to see that technology has changed a lot mm -hmm. and kids nowadays have so many resources 
that we didn't have even a, a decade or two ago. Yeah. So um, number one, foremost, just like YouTube or anything else, the reference recordings that are out there, yeah. right? We bring them into, they're so easily accessible all the time. Uh, but more specifically to things like Smart Music, which is now Make Music Cloud, um, my goodness, what an incredible opportunity for solo work or ensemble work, chamber work, of uh, being able to, to interact and play. You know, solos, in my mind, are basically, when you have a, a, a piano accompaniment with it, it's a duet. You know, I think, I think we lose sight of that a lot in secondary school when we, like, when we work up a solo, just working up your part and not understanding it's really a dialogue. Yeah. with another instrument. So being able to to be able to have access to the piano playing with you, even though it's not human, but like they can still get that interaction, yeah. interplay off the music. Um, that's huge, especially right now, serving a community um, that we have a lot of kids in need. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they can't afford um, all the time to bring in a piano accompanist. Yeah. And be able to have opens that. up a whole other world oh, for of sure. accessibility. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. cool. That's the that's the, really the biggest thing that we're we're doing right now that allows us to bring maybe you know a live accompanist for some things, but also be able to work up to that moment with with the resources that we have. Sure. Uh, do you have any like fun performances, projects, things coming up that you're working on with your kids uh, or just personally? Well, I mean, the, the, everything that we're working on is fun right now. Yeah. You know, I'm. It's right, a great problem to have. Yeah, it it, it is. I like. Right now, um, I'm two and a half years in to, at, at Louisville High School. Most of my life, I've been a middle school band director. So learning so much, um, enjoying so much right now. I think we're in, a, we're in a, such a great spot in our program and the, the future is so bright. So it, just every performance opportunity we have right now, we're really looking forward to, you know, so everything in the spring, a contest season, already looking forward to what, what's coming up in the summer and the fall, mm -hmm. you know, as because as you know, as a, as a high school band director, it just never stops. Never You're always stops. planning yep. so much. So everything looks really bright. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for taking some time to chat with us today. Yeah, it's been great.